My name is Keiichi Matsuda. I'm a designer and filmmaker uh, dealing with emerging technologies and urbanism. Well, augmented reality is one of those really interesting technologies because you have such a balance between what it could you know, change our lives for the better, but also how it could potentially harm us as well. You know, I think uh, one of the easiest ways to think about augmented reality is that because we're able to take information and put it anywhere, you know, we don't need to use a screen anymore. We don't need to sit in an office or look at our computer or look at a tablet or even a phone. We can actually just be in the world. So it means that we're able to move away from those devices and instead of focusing on those things, on those glowing rectangles, suddenly we're like looking at the world again, which is nice. You know, I think that's a really nice thing about it. It's, it's very human-centered, it's very natural and very intuitive. Um, but also there are problems as well because augmented space is fundamentally a space which is uh, monitored and surveyed. You know, augmented reality, it has to know the position of your head. So it has to know, you know where you are in the world, what you're looking at, uh, how you feel about it. It knows what you eat, it knows when you sleep, it knows everything. So the privacy implications of the technology are, are quite severe. Um, and I think you know, there's not much discussion at the moment going on about that kind of thing. You know, I think you know, the technology hasn't become mainstream enough for it to be a problem. Um, but hopefully, you know, projects like mine will start to allow people to have a conversation about it and, and to try and work out how they want to use it. My studio is pretty small and I quite like it that way because it means that we have lots of flexibility. We can, do, we can choose which projects we want to do and we can make sure that we're always working on stuff that's interesting rather than just doing whatever pays the most money. Um, so I think, yeah, we're definitely attracted more towards uh, opportunity than, than capital. It's pretty simple tools to be honest, nothing, nothing very complicated. Um, I like to be kind of in control of my project, so I need to be able to know how everything works, you know, even if I'm working with other people. So uh, yeah, everything I use, like most of the design is done pencil and paper, and then you know, rebuilt in, in Illustrator or Photoshop, and then composited in After Effects. So they're very kind of, they're kind of prosumer tools, I guess, you know, that normal people can use them as well. You don't have to be professional. And uh, then some yeah, match moving software as well to, to be able to get the, uh, the, the you know, things in the right place. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for me, I, I don't, as long as I can communicate the idea effectively and make, and kind of sell out to people and, and make it look how I want to look, it doesn't need to be perfect. You know, you see there's also little tracking mistakes in my films, and I, but I try to make them into something which is a positive. So, you know, I was thinking when I couldn't track it properly, I was like, oh, then what should I do? But then I was like, you know what? You know, in the future, the glasses are not going to be able to track it properly either. They're going to have problems, the same problems that I'm having. So I made it into more of a feature and, and tried to highlight the problems with it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not that hard. And I think if you have the idea and you have a kind of aesthetic sense, then anybody can do that. What's very difficult to represent visually is this idea of subjective space. So that's a space where you know, you and I are in, in the same physical location, but the world that we see through our device can be completely different. And that's a really important uh, quality of augmented reality that, you know, everybody can see something different. Everybody can use the space in a different way. But obviously, if you look into a movie or something, you only have one perspective, you know, the perspective of the camera. So to make things easy, you just have everyone, okay, everyone can see the same thing, you know, that's the easiest way. But uh, I think that the way we use uh, technology at the moment, you know, personal devices like, you know, uh, uh, tablets and smartphones and, and uh, laptops, we're all using them in different ways and we're all customizing those things as well. So there are kind of private space at the moment, you know, those interfaces, those customized interfaces and, and uh, desktops and, uh, you know, what apps you're downloading onto your phone, they say something about you. That's your private area, you know? So I think, uh, I think augmented reality will definitely shift in this direction where it will start to become adapted to who's using it. And you'll learn how to use augmented reality, but also augmented reality is going to learn something about you. The user interface that I was looking at was basically gesture controlled. And the nice thing about gesture controlled interfaces is that everybody gets it. You know, you can watch the film and my films are only like a couple of minutes long, you know. So I don't have time to explain a really complex idea. All I can do is, is you know, show something simple. But gesture is nice because I do this and something appears and everyone knows that I made this action. But really the gesture that I show is kind of, it's kind of a joke, I don't know, like going around the city, like waving your arms about is not a very efficient way to do it. You, know, you can have something much simpler, like just a subtle movement of your fingertips. 
you know, just uh, this is a click and this is a, a swipe or whatever. And you can just ha do that down by your side. You know, this is, this is a much simpler way to do it. That's fine and, you know, good and just as, as you know, good. So I think the interface work in the films was more of a communication tool to allow people to understand the concepts. I don't think it's really going to be like that. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's going to be so like window based either. Well, in terms of the possibility of, of the actual technology itself, not so far, you know, maybe even a couple of years. But the thing is that the, the changes that accompany technology are not just technological change, you know. There's also cultural change and infrastructural change and political change and economic change. And if you see it, like how e-commerce worked, it took maybe 10 years since the start of the internet for e-commerce to become a, a business model. So I think as well with augmented reality, it will take both the kind of consumer and also the advertiser and also you know, the, the other guys as well. I don't know, everyone in the world. It takes a little bit of time to adjust and get used to it and try and understand what it's for. Um, so probably the world that you see in the films that I made, we're never going to see that probably. It's just, a, it's just an example. It's like, it could be this, what do you think? You know, then we can have a conversation. It's going to be something maybe close, maybe not, I don't know. But uh, I think, yeah, we're realistically, maybe like five, 10 years, we'll, we can be expecting to wear this kind of thing. And I mean everybody, like, you know, you can go out and buy a pair of Google glasses probably next year or the year after, but you know, no one's going to be wearing that for a couple of years, right? It's, it, it's only like real enthusiasts who are going to be doing that at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you remember when people started having mobile phones? You know, mobile phones are an easy technology. We, we understand what it is already because we're used to having phones at home. But you know, the first people to get mobile phones was just like uh, some explorers going out into the desert or something, right? And they needed it. And then you had, you know, people who were really interested in technology and you had really rich people. And then you had really busy people, like, you know, businessmen, things like that. And then finally now, you know, like five-year-old kids have got them. You know? <laughs> I don't know about that, but yeah. So I think it trickles down and it, it moves in different ways. I did a collaboration with a guy called James Alaban, who's an a, a interaction designer and artist. Uh, we did a boot built installation together in October last year called Cell, which is looking at this idea of the, uh, the digital aura, this kind of uh, cloud of kind of keywords and tags floating around you. And so the installation uh, is built using Connect. So as you walk around this space, all these kind of keywords track and follow you and, and come down and build this idea of an identity. Uh, but I'm also currently working on another project, uh, which is to be launched in September, which is also looking at how we can try and... I think all of my work is about how to uh, connect the virtual and the physical. And sometimes those areas touch and you get something interesting happening. And sometimes they touch and you have some problem happening. So always, you know, we have, if you imagine them as two layers, the, the physical and the virtual, you know, my, my job is existing in the middle here.